Hello, I'm William Henry. Welcome to The Awakened Soul. Have you ever wondered if your soul is from another star system? Did you ever feel like Earth is not your home planet? If so, you may be a star seed. Star seeds are beings who have experienced life elsewhere in the universe. The term sounds really new agey. However, the concept has a very ancient origin. The Stoics of Greece in the third century BC are credited with first discussing the conception of our soul as a divine spark, a divine seed, seeded from the stars, a star seed. The Apostle Paul used the Stoic imagery of seeds to explain the resurrection and ascension of Jesus. By taking a look at these early beliefs, we will gain greater understanding of today's ascension teachings and open our path to new, higher levels. Seeds, as tiny and humble as they are, are a beautiful and powerful sacred metaphor for life, consciousness, and the soul. They're magic, as in the fable Jack and the Beanstalk. In Jack and the Beanstalk, Jack sells his poor mother's cow for a handful of magical beans. This infuriates her, and she tosses the beans into the garden they grow into a thick stalk that climbs into the sky. Jack proceeds to climb the stalk, find the land of a giant, and steal from it. The giant pursues Jack, but the boy is able to scurry down the stalk fast enough to chop it down and send the giant to his death. Now, there's a lot of esoteric meaning packed into this story, including the reference to the giants or titans who we discussed in our episode about the titan, Prometheus. The great mythologist and esotericist Manly P. Hall once gave a lecture about the esoteric meaning of Jack and the Beanstalk. He wrote, in the allegory of the Beanstalk, Jack is the initiate climbing towards perfection. The Beanstalk has two significances. First, it is the secret doctrine which may grow up to its fullness in a single night if that night be regarded as the duration of the soul in its mortal state. The Beanstalk, is further symbolic of the soul itself, of which consciousness must climb to discover the divine sphere from which it was exiled. So this is Manly P. Hall laying out the early Gnostic teaching about the soul's ascension. That teaching says the soul can grow its way home. Manly also uses our magic word, perfection, and this is our soul's goal. Jack's name is derived from the biblical name Jacob or Jacob, who famously wrestled with an angel at a place called Peniel, which, re which rings of Peniel, the gland in the center of the brain, which some consider the seat of the soul. Jacob also scaled the ladder to heaven at a place called Luz, a Hebrew word that means an almond tree. When it comes to stories and fables written in the sacred, secret, or mystery language, Trees, ladders, staircases, and the like often symbolize a spiritual journey, as well as the soul's evolution and progressive development and unfoldment or ascension. Throughout the world, people ascended upon trees, poles, or pillars of wood, rising to the divine source. These, of course, start as seeds, and the seed is our soul. Jack's magic beans or seeds like Jacob's almond hold blueprints for life, the process of renewal, and the seeds of our ascension. The Jewish menorah or tree of light exemplifies this pillar. It is connected to the almond tree and is known as the almond tree of light. A Jewish midrash says, and by the tree of life, the souls of the righteous are going up and down to heaven and from heaven to the Garden of Eden, like a man going up and down a ladder. This is an obvious reference to Jacob's ladder and points to the interchangeability of the tree of life and the ladder symbolism. They both symbolize the soul's path to the divine. At their most basic level, the seed is the means by which a plant, tree, or flower reproduces itself. Almonds, in particular, are an image of radical transformation, which is why the resurrected or transformed Jesus is shown in an almond-shaped gate of light, a stargate, 
a portal, often shown composed of rainbow light. The gate of light is actually a mandorla, which is the Italian word for almond. The mandorla is an ancient symbol of two circles coming together, overlapping one another to form an almond shape in the middle. A symbol is not merely an image, it is like a door into the inner world of the soul. The circles can represent the sacred and earthly dimensions, and they meet in the middle in our soul. The Western Mandorla, or Soul Gate, first appears in 5th century mosaics decorating the Church of Santa Maria Maggiore in Rome. Jesus and Mary ride within a blue mandorla filled with stars. Affirming that this mandorla is a stargate and containing utter secrets is the fact that we don't know for sure where this symbolism came from. But it's also found in Buddhism, where it symbolizes a luminous ascension cloud. And we often find within this cloud the triple dot symbol of the chintz benai. The chintz benai is the symbol for the light body and it's seen here as the fruit of the mandorla. In Tibetan tradition, Padmasambhava, the light body guru, is shown in a mandorla symbolizing the rainbow body of light, the flower of our soul seed. So too is the king of Shambhala. By the sixth century, the mandorla had become a standard attribute of Christ in scenes of the transfiguration, in which Christ shows himself to his apostles transformed into a celestial appearance and the ascension in which the resurrected Christ ascends to heaven and later in other scenes involving the resurrected or celestial Christ. These are all moments of transcendence and traveling through time and space. And it's not just Jesus who travels this way. Mary is also shown in this vessel of light as is Francis of Assisi. Personally, I could look at these images all day. They have a vibe about them. In fact, the almond itself is the shape of a vibrating string. These images are designed to show the soul at its highest earthly vibration. And by vibing or resonating with these images, we can become it. One of the most famous images of the Mandorla, also known as the Vesca Pisces, is found on the legendary Chalice Well in Glastonbury, England. The early Christians used the symbol as a method to describe the coming together of heaven and earth, the coming together of the divine and the human. This, by the way, is the origin of the Christian fish symbol. But most don't realize the mandorla is actually a stargate. The seed of light is a modern name for an ancient geometric figure and universal symbol of creation. Drumvalo Melchizedek is given credit for reviving this ancient knowledge and symbolism and connecting it to the flower of life. I'm often asked if I've studied Drumvalo's work on the Merkaba, and the answer is no. I made a conscious decision long ago to stick with the original Merkaba teachers, the ancient Jewish and Egyptian mystics, but hope one day to be able to study Drumvalo's works. The name, Seed of Life, instantly offers insights and deeper meaning and purpose into the symbolism found at the heart of a pattern called the flower of life. There is an entire cosmology of consciousness encoded into this singular geometric seed. The seed of life consists of seven overlapping circles with the same diameter. Six of them are regularly spaced within the seventh, producing a rosette with 18 lens-shaped petals, six smaller ones inside the 12 larger ones. The seed of life is formed from a relationship of six circles around one, and in fact, six circles will always fit exactly around a seventh circle of the same size. And these seven circles mirror our chakras, and also the colors of the rainbow body, as well as the musical scales. This forms a foundation upon which the infinite fractal nature of life can be understood and the gate of life opened. As the seed grows, it becomes the tree of life, or tree upon which the soul ascends to heaven. Thus, 
The seed is a perfect metaphor for the soul and its ascension. The seed, or incarnating human soul, emerges from the spiritual realm originally and plants itself in the earthly body of clay, or DNA, for the production of earthly fruit. As the saying says, it is by our fruits that we are known. The worry in our present age is that the soul seed can be planted on earth, but won't be allowed to fully grow. Instead, it could rot or wither. And just as the body needs food, so too does the soul. It craves wisdom, especially about the meaning of its existence. And this is why seeds are the basis of knowledge and wisdom. 